Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Gadget 360 show. And you're thinking, ye kya ho hai, right? I mean, why do I have a backpack with me? Well, all of this is going to be answered because we have some incredible stories for you this week. We have the iPad 10th generation, which is in my backpack. Updated design type C port, which is such a relief. Camera position change, which is such a relief. No home button, which is Okay, but I think they've done well, except for the price point, which has jumped massively. Second story is a Dyson laboratory in a backpack. So I have to tell you, this is one of the most fascinating things I've been doing for the last few days. We're going to bring you that entire story. Then our big review, the Lenovo Yoga All-in-One, the AIO 7 desktop. First desktop of its kind with a rotatable screen, easy connectivity and a whole lot more. So like I said, today the Gadget 360 show is literally on fire. Let's get started. Synology Incorporated organized a press conference earlier this week to announce their product lineup for 2023. They added that their goal for this coming year is to provide solutions in the areas of data storage and security. For next year, we are glad to launch more product line to make the product portfolio complete, including IP cameras, including routers, including cloud business, C2 business. The conference had sessions highlighting details of their upcoming projects along with benefits of choosing Synology over others. I would like to highlight that the main value proposition of Synology is that when clients buy a NAS device, when they buy our hardware, they could leverage our rich software ecosystem free of charge. Look forward to our detailed reviews on their exciting products of 2023. Netflix recently launched the Stranger Things Puzzle Tales, a role-playing game with a show reimagined as a cartoon. You get to collect your favorite characters and visit your favorite locations in Hawkins and the Upside Down. The game is available online and on Play Store. But wait, there is more. Netflix teased Stranger Things fans with the announcement of another game based on the fourth season of the show. This much-awaited game comes with a twist, wherein the players get to play Vecna the villain seeking revenge on Eleven for destroying him. The game is set to have its release in the winter of 2023. And our top story today is the iPad 10th generation. Can this be now considered a huge step up? Because it comes in a fantastic array of colors. I really did like the yellow. Fingerprint scanner is now looking good. The camera now, you actually have it now in the horizontal frame, which is fantastic for video calls. USB-C now. iOS 16 now looks much, much better. New improved keyboard is an accessory. The price point has been jumped up a lot. The camera remains the same, even though the position has been changed. The USB-C, even even though it is now USB-C, still works at speeds of USB 2.0. So the big question really is, is this really an upgrade or is this just cosmetic? We're going to find out in our story. The recently launched 10th generation iPad seems new and improved with its updated design. But is it truly a step up from its predecessor? Let's find out. The latest 10.9-inch iPad looks and feels very similar to its 9th generation version, but there are a few differences. The most noticeable change are the brand new colors available to the iPad, namely blue, pink and yellow. They are distinct enough for anyone to notice that you are in trend with the latest iPad. Also the fingerprint scanner has been moved from the front to the top, leaving us with a full screen display. And if you prefer the biometric options, don't worry, they are still available. To add on, the bezels are a lot thinner than its forerunner, providing a bigger view to comfortably watch your favorite TV shows and movies. The much-awaited change to the iPad has been the transfer to a Type-C charging port. This means you never have to carry a separate charger just for your iPad again, especially if you are otherwise an Android user. But this change has one big problem, which we will talk about very soon. Another major transformation to this iPad is the location of the camera. It has been moved from the shorter bezel to the center of the longer side. The benefit is that you now seem to be looking directly into the camera, as opposed to the older versions where it seems like you are looking to the side. The huge drawback from this update is the removal of the magnet and charger for the second gen pencil as it was in the same location as where the camera is now. This means 
no second generation pencil with this iPad. It gets crazier. The only compatible pencil with this iPad, which is the first generation model, charges with a lightning port, which the iPad doesn't have anymore. So you need a special adapter, which is an additional rupees 900, just to charge your pencil. This also means that you cannot charge your iPad and pencil at the same time, unless you have a second charger. Frustrating, right? The update to the pencil may be a bummer, but the keyboard has a few mention-worthy upgrades. The new Magic Keyboard Folio has a two-piece design along with full-sized keys and a larger trackpad. It gives the feeling of working on a laptop. The best addition though are the new 14-function keys that make up the top row. Apart from this, the keyboard easily connects to the iPad and doesn't need any charging, which is a big relief. In terms of software changes, similar to the latest iPad Pro, the 10th generation iPad comes with iOS 16 installed in it. This of course is accessible to all pads that are 5th generation and higher. So while this software update doesn't necessarily set this iPad apart, it does give it a newer feel. The iOS 16 has brought along some incredible features, some of which were covered in our iPad Pro video, but there are many, many more. One of our favorites is the subject detection attribute that distinguishes the subject from the background in a photo or video and allows you to drag the subject alone to another photo, video or a completely different app. You just need to make sure that there is a clear subject who is separable from the background. This distinguishable attribute also works with text in photos or videos. You simply press on the text and it highlights, giving you the option to copy it like regular text. And as mentioned in the Pro video, you now have the option to edit or delete text which you already sent, with a time frame of 15 minutes. The issue here is that the deleting and editing works only if the person receiving the text also has iOS 16 installed on their device. Continuing in the line of issues with this iPad, the biggest one for us is its cost. The base price of this iPad is Rs 44,900, but since the updates aren't as notable in comparison with the 9th generation version, why does it cost an additional 11,000 rupees? The 9th generation iPad was and still is only 33,900. The most basic iPad logically should be affordable and sensibly priced. What makes this even more unreasonable is the 64GB storage, which in today's day and age is nothing for a prominent device. The only option to expand the storage is by paying an additional 15,000 rupees. This feels like a one step forward and three steps back kind of situation. The 10th gen iPad certainly has a lot to offer, but most of its essential attributes are available in the 9th gen version for a much cheaper price. If you are keen on the center camera or want to recycle your first generation pencil or something along those lines, then maybe you can consider buying the Gen 10 iPad, but not otherwise. This is our take on it. What's yours? Okay, time now to reveal the story behind the backpack that I've been actually holding on to for a while. Should I reveal it here? Why don't you in fact join me for a run? Ooh, okay. So as you can see, I'm out for a run with a backpack on me. And the obvious question, why am I running with a backpack? Is this one of those weighted backpacks that runners use? No, it's not. This is actually a backpack that has got so much more. In fact, this is the most high-tech backpack, I think, in the entire world. This is the Dyson Air Quality Backpack. Dyson has literally built in a pollution laboratory monitoring system inside this very high-tech, amazing sensors, totally portable. Before I move on, I want to show you something. Thing. I'm out for a run and this backpack has just told me that it's gone from well, right now it's showing extremely poor about 250 is the PM 2.5 and the DAQ is also terrible it's in red well you must be thinking what am I talking about let me explain exactly what I'm doing this is a fascinating story that you must come on this journey with me so what is all the tech that is built in? This is a portable air sensing device. Wherever I go, it's going to tell me and give me data on the pollution around me, the air quality around me. What am I breathing? That's what it's telling me every second of the day. The best part, it's also tracking location. So it's telling me where I am, at what time and what was the air quality 
right at that moment. So you wear it just like any other backpack. It's fairly light also despite all the tech inside. It's got a lot of sensors built in. As you go about, it's telling me all to do with the pollution around me. It's got a GPS built in and it's got a battery pack too. So why do I call it a lab built into a backpack? Because of the professional sensors built in. The sensors inside are now tracking nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, PM2.5, PM10 and a whole lot more. And all of this is being relayed to the Dyson AQ app that in real time is telling me everything happening around me. By the way, we just hit severe and this is what I've been running in. I didn't know. But now comes the obvious question. I mean, why am I wearing it? What's the objective? And why am I so excited about it? So we know we live in a very, very polluted world, but are we really aware of the level of pollution when we go about our daily lives? I mean, when you go for a coffee, you're in a car, you're out for a run, in a gym, meeting people, the room that you work in, the office, all these areas. No, we're not. Using this backpack, I'm gonna to go to various locations and find out how my daily life is completely and totally polluted up. So we've done the run. Let's now go to the gym. So my quest now is going to be to take this everywhere I go, how I lead my life and how much pollution I'm getting exposed to. That is what I'm going to do. Now I've come into my gym and again out here the DAQ in the PM 2.5 is off the charts. I'm going to try and get an understanding on what level of pollution am I exposed to wherever I'm living. And the app will continue to tell me if I'm breathing clean air or not. Dyson and I both believe that if you want to truly beat the pollution, it's much more important to actually understand the problem at a deeper level. And how do we get that awareness and knowledge? Using this, the Dyson Air Quality Backpack and the Dyson AQ app. The backpack can help us protect the ones we love the most and the backpack and the app will be able to tell us how safe we are, how good the quality of air around us is and what measures we can actually take. And to make matters even more interesting, I'm also sending these backpacks out to two more of my friends. One is Pooja Kef, a very, very famous MC and host and also married to famous cricketer Mohammed Kef. Hi Rajiv, thanks so much for sending me this tech. Honestly, I didn't know such cool tech existed. I'm a little nervous and excited because my kids and me, we are in and out all the time. So what is the level of pollution that we are actually living in? Well, let's find out. The second is Dr. Rajat Chauhan, a famous marathon runner who's been running for 38 years. He's an MBBS doctor specializing in sports exercise medicine, as well as an author of three books. His insight is going to be incredible. Thanks, Rajiv, for sending me this Dyson new, uh, you know, the measures that it does for air quality and all that. And I didn't know that such a tech existed, which measured things like all in one, you know, PM 2.5, 10 and NO, CO2, things like that, uh, and in a bag like this, yeah, so it's wonderful. It'll be good to know what kind of environment we are, what kind of air are we breathing. So it'll be good fun to check out this new technology and go for a run with it. So thanks a lot, Rajiv. Great, so this quest is now underway, but lots more to discover. Does the backpack actually help and how can we actually become more aware of the pollution that's always around us? We'll go back to Pooja and Rajat. And I'll keep going to various locations and find out from them, from their experiences, my experiences. I'll also tell you about the Dyson backpack and the app and how it's making me very aware. And then we're going to introduce someone from Dyson all the way from UK. And we'll talk to him to find out about the actual science behind this backpack, why they came up with this backpack and how it will help us combat the pollution fight. Tune in next week to find out all of it. It's going to be an amazing story. Let's take a quick break right now on the show. When we come back, lots more happening. Now do remember part two where all that exciting analysis is going to come out will be on next week. Now let's move on to the Lenovo Yoga All-in-One 7. I've got to say this is quite a desktop. First 4K touchscreen display, flexible screen, can be a second monitor also. Camera, thank God, has a privacy shutter, super fast processor. This is indeed an all-in-one system, but they're really taking it to a whole new level. 
a desktop that can go from horizontal to vertical in a matter of seconds. Introducing the extra supple Lenovo Yoga AI07. This rotatable desktop is indeed the first of its kind, but is flexibility a big factor in deciding which desktop to buy? Or does the AI07 have more to offer than what meets the eye? Let's find out. The AIO7 desktop has a 27-inch 4K borderless touchscreen display that guarantees color accuracy and an immersive viewing experience. It comes with a detachable camera, a wireless mouse and a keyboard. All easy to attach and easy to use. The camera may not have the best resolution for video calling or recording purposes, but what sets it apart is its privacy shutter. You can simply swipe the shutter to block the camera's view so no one can hack or misuse it. Whether day or night, your room will feel safe. The wireless mouse and keyboard are quite basic but still smooth and efficient at their jobs. Revisiting the screen, its movement works exactly like the rotate option on your phone. When the screen goes from horizontal to vertical or vice versa, so does the content. This is possible through an inbuilt gravity sensor. It doesn't stop there. Like with phones, you can turn off the rotate option so that even when you turn the monitor, the content doesn't change its angle. It seems like a useless feature but comes in handy when you feel like watching something while lying down. The AIO7 also has an adjustable hinge that can be used to tilt the screen back or move it up and down for comfortable working conditions. Another external feature that is a huge selling point for this desktop is its ability to double up as a smart desktop and a second monitor. So along with being a regular desktop, you can connect it to a laptop, tablet or even a phone and turn it into a dual screen setup giving you the advantage of a bigger screen. These connections are possible through screen casting where the control stays with the external device or by using HDMI cables. Having a bigger screen can allow you to edit photos or videos on your phone with ease or watch your favorite show or movie with a more cinematic experience. Talking about cinema-like experience, there are two JBL stereo speakers just below the display that are optimized by Dolby's advanced sound tuning. So you get a better bass sound and better audio in general which is something that 5 watt speakers normally don't do. The Lenovo AI07 desktop has so much to offer on the outside. The question is, are the internal capabilities powerful enough to match the external? They most certainly are. Its AMD Ryzen 5800 series processor is a ninja fast processor that does not flinch at any complex function you throw at it. No game or editing software can slow down its speed. It is an octa-core processor that gives higher performance and speed in comparison to most processors. In addition to that, it has an improved graphics card to run editing softwares even more effortlessly and up to 1 TB SSD storage and added slots to increase storage as per your choice. The desktop has easy access to Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity as well. So it is in fact an all-in-one system that comes at the cost of 1 lakh 71,990 rupees. Now with its rotatable screen, device sharing capabilities, extra secure camera and high resolution display, its internal capabilities, though powerful, seem slightly lacking in comparison. So revisiting the question of whether flexibility is enough or more is needed is on you to decide. If you are looking for a cool second monitor that is also handy on its own, this is definitely worth putting on top of your list. But if you are looking for the highest speed and performance, it's not bad, but there are better alternatives. What choice will you make? That then was the Gadget 360 show for this week. Lots and lots of really interesting, insane, crazy gadgets coming up next week. Of course, Dyson Part 2 will also be there. So do join me, Rajiv Makni, on the show next week.